Alrighty. Second day in a row, it's overcast. And, uh, what is it? It's about the bloody December the 11th today. Seems as though some sort of bugs have dramatically torn the hell out of all that. Um, yeah. Never did get to measure that, but it's over six foot tall. That noise you can hear is right there, flying in. And uh, fair chance that he's going to be eating the heads on. Well, those ones down there have all gone like that. When they go white, that's when there's all the seeds are mature and all that. Some of these are yet to go, but there's one, two, three there, and there's all of these are all gone white. So, get you up to one that I can walk up to closer here. And there you go, there's the seeds. And they break off fairly easily, actually. There we go. My uncle often questioned if you can make bread out of them. And I tell you what, we've got enough of these seeds that you could do something with them. But anyway, cockatoos eat them. And the sheep eat them too. If the grass is... Uh, <laughs> Not already bloody four and a half foot deep everywhere else. Sometimes I just do. <coughs> now decide the day, okay? We're liking these right now, so they'll tear the hell out of them. That was what they done last year. This year, yeah, they couldn't be bothered, and it's probably, as I said, the grass is just so friggin' deep. You know, it's all drying out a bit here, but it's still sort of half dry half green down there. A lot of it's drying out to be honest. It's more like about 75% dry. Anyway, this is starting to come back alright. A lot of the smaller ones are all starting to fire up down low. Um, of course I've left a lot of the edge ones at a reasonable height in case they want to go to seed or whatever. A lot of them were shorter anyway. Uh, there were taller ones that I did snip off, but the ones very close to the edge were shorter. And this here is going alright too. There's a couple of bugs that have got into this, which I can barely believe it, but yeah. This is, as you can see, the runners are spreading. I mean, this thing, one clump here and I planted the other one. Was it there or there? I can't remember. But the runners are going berserk. I mean, this thing's better than I could have expected. At the rate we're going, by the end of summer, this is going to have filled the entire IBC when it was only one plant, two plant, and a couple of little runners off, and it's going to have filled the whole IBC there. And uh, it looks brilliant. Aside from the bits that got bitten off. It looks like a very soft, sort of gentle one. I've got a bit of it actually coming up through this, this mesh here is off the top of that. They've got a bit of it coming up through, so... I'll have to move the mesh at some point, but I won't harvest any of this this year. I want to get it established. And uh, I may even get some seeds off it. And if these little ends go to the seed... Some of them are doing something anyway. Little lumpy bits there. There might be little flower heads coming out. You can't really see. It's very, very fine. But there may be little flower heads about to open up. And if it is, whoopee-doo. I have... Um, that stuff is obviously the native mint, is which is why it's... When I got it, it was a lot smaller. But with a bit of fertiliser and a bit of warmth, well, some warmth, not warmth every day, but it's sort of really taken off something chronic and uh, if you find it <laughs> by the sheer unbelievable chance that you find any in the wild you couldn't take it out of the wild anyway because it's sort of a native and you know you can't go digging plants out of national parks it's as simple as that um, so 
Oh, well, I've got seeds to something which is otherwise only available at certain government nurseries and basically rather hard to get. And it was hard for me to get those plants. I should have watered, well, I've got to water these this morning. Wilting a bit, I should have watered them yesterday. For some reason, everything's tearing into the leaves of the bloody tomatoes as well. I've never actually had that where things have eaten the leaves of tomatoes before. But they got into some of the the bigger leaves and that it's probably due to all the grass being around it and whatnot. Which is a bit annoying. I've never had anything attack tomatoes before. Ever. No pests. Something's eaten the leaves but uh, had a bit of rain the other day, we got there about a quarter inch. It's sort of um, intriguing really. That, you know, the other day at work it sort of happened more, oh, it's about bloody 10.30 in the morning but it happened here at, you know, geez, like 7.30 or something, it started raining at a reasonable rate too, which is just bizarre for for this time of year. Little flowers are still out on these. I haven't strapped these to the um, the wood here but the thing is they're going to be laying back into the wood anyway so that'll effectively be their staking as all these bits of wood here that are all tied into these couple of posts that sort of end up going out through the end of the chicken wire on either ends. And one of them sort of, a couple of them are slumped back on it already. But, um, yeah. So anyway, that's a bit of a bum. They've got all the leaves eaten, and it's probably something to do with all this. All the grass that's around it. If you wonder why I sort of leave the grass, it's not sheer laziness, it's an attempt to try and shade it, which is the exact same reason that I didn't cut all this out here with a lawnmower. Afternoon sun's always a lot worse than most of the sun during most of the day. Most summers, this summer is one of these ones like we had, oh, I forget what it was, 2012 or something. We had a summer there that was just, wasn't even a summer at all. And we're getting another one of those years where the summer's just really not happening. Anyway. breeze there. Um, yeah, I've been, and I will do it again in a minute after I water those uh, tomatoes, been playing around with the box thorn. Um, basically the ones that have re-sprouted or the ones that are still going, I've gone down and sprayed them last night. I'll do some more this morning after I water those tomatoes. And, uh, yeah, these are coming along fairly well, actually. I'm hoping it'll be a bit warmer so it would actually ripen the damn things, but they'll get there. They're, um, yeah, it does what it usually does, drops a few on the ground. And not too bad a year for them. I've seen them heavier and I was hoping it would retain all the ones it had but looks like it's dropping a few uh, which is just the way it goes. This one's growing out a bit. That's what happens every year that bird of paradise thing just dies off like a heap of shit. Come back nice in winter again. A lot of this that I was killing off died pretty well. There's still a little bit here and there, a bit of morning glory. Uh, oh, some of that's actually that bloody vine thing. But there's just a little bit of morning glory here and there. That I might have to spray again. Eh. Haven't they taken note of the fig tree? That should be coming along too. I'll have a look at that in a second. <laughs> yeah, some stuff up. Now let's continue on. 
expect half of the birds to just tear the hell out of these anyway. So they're going alright, it's a bit hard to see through there. God, this bloody vine is unbelievable! It's going over the south thistle, or milk thistle as we call them. Yeah, you can see the little plums on there. That's actually a fairly heavy amount of plums on that. As I said, the birds will probably get the bastards before I get a chance. I'm a bit worried about the longevity of this one under here being crowded over by this bloody box thorn and mainly the vine. This one might survive, but yeah, it's part of the reason why I wanted to rip out a lot of this. It's just sort of encroached from here and it's keeping on growing in. And it's just getting these blasted poor little plum trees weighing down on them, the vines strangling the shit out of them and in pulling them out I, you know, I'd probably break off a little branch or two in the process of towing all this out it's still a big question mark as to what's going to happen with all this I don't know that we're going to do much box on at all this year it's just a a lot of a change in circumstances and stuff in recent weeks. Different ideas I've had <coughs> that are coming alive, other ones that are being knocked on the head. <coughs> Some things have been delayed to give other things a chance. Not that I had a great amount on the agenda, but there's something else that's come up on the agenda that's reasonably important. Yeah, I swear I had a bunch of figs on this only a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Not many, but some. Who knows what happened there? I can't see any. Birds probably got them anyway. There wasn't that many to begin with anyway. Anyway, no shortage of plums still. I'm thinking of getting out the uh, plums I dehydrated last year and eating them and just see, you know, if they stayed preserved well or, or what happened. Um, yeah. And also, as uh, work dies down in January, I might start eating all of this massive supply of bloody rice and other stuff I've got. I've got huge amounts of parsley. I've still got heaps of rolled oats that I bought and never flipping used. Not piles of rolled oats and pasta, but a fair amount. And I've got massive stocks of bloody rice. And I've still got a freezer <coughs> full of all this uh, spinach. I barely ate a, any more than a couple of little blobs of spinach, really speaking. I only bought up spinach about two or three times out of all the stuff that I grew here and the rest of it is still in the freezer so I'll probably be eating that January because there is quite a decent amount of it, quite a, an amount that would make any kid cringe at the thought of eating the amount of spinach that I've still got in the freezer. It's in my parents' freezer actually. Got some chicken livers there too. Haven't I pussed? I was going to cook those up this weekend, but I just forgot all about that. I've got all those for bugger all. You usually, if you get any sort of awful related products, they are absolutely dirt cheap in this country. I mean, in England they put awful in the mints over here. <laughs> if people taste a meat pie with awful in it, they will literally just fling it out the window. And uh, when they do sell offal in the supermarket, it, it's just almost worthless. <clears throat> Honestly, you wonder if they don't spend more on the packaging than what they sell it for. <laughs> Especially when I buy it at bloody half price. <laughs> anyway, this is <laughs> some of the wood that was here. I've got not all of it, but a lot of the longer pieces and cut them all in half or in a third so it's long enough to use as kindling. A lot of these were the length that needed to go in the, um, you know, that would fit in the wood stove but were too long to fit in the wood heater. So I've cut a bunch of them up so I can use them as kindling in the wood heater 
And uh, there's a few more I could have cut, but some of them have sort of got rotten ends and they're sort of turning to shit, basically. So, but that's where all the box thorn was. I cleared all that out. All I've got is a couple of little bits of box thorn in there and a little handful here. And the rest of it is still inside in there with tubs. I'm barely burning any wood now. You know, I do every second night still light the wood heater. Even though we're what 11 days into summer um, and uh, but those days are ending rather quickly so I won't get to burn all the box thorn that I've got stored in buckets inside well in the veranda this is some of the biggest stuff I thought I'd stack that separately just to try and see what dregs we had left here yeah, I've got different ideas and, and whatnot I might end up, we'll see how it all goes, making up a wood heater uh, out of one of these old car gas tanks, um, and uh, like the propane tanks, LPG tanks, uh, and there's a certain idea I've got that involves basically one that doesn't heat up directly, but one that is basically a ducted system where you have a pipe of types going to a wood heater, a circulation fan that goes around some sort of a sheet metal jacket around that wood heater and then back out uh, to another pipe. So it's sort of like a external wood heater and I might end up making up one of those uh, for various uses. And I've sort of, it's, I still keep in mind that I've got a um, 10 pan gas bottle that's uh, been turned into a wood heater but not completely finished. Uh, and it may end up being that I use that and it may end up being that I use a car propane tank. Um, and it's quite likely there's longer stuff we're going to, this is the stuff that's really bad on your saw. It blightens the blade something chronic. So that's why it's sort of longer was putting it in the wood stove but uh, yeah <coughs> there's more of that here too father uh, had a bit of a sort out of a bit of old shit actually long story short he's actually refencing the property and I should well not the whole property but just the front part near his house uh, and that resulted in a about three quarters of this stack here so uh, and a lot of that's that same hard crap so um, yeah I only really like to use reciprocating saw cutting that because the blades are disposable and you don't you know wreck any $40 circular saw blades or whatever over a bit of crap wood when we're already surrounded by tons of good stuff Needless to say, the thistles are pretty friggin' heavy. <laughs> it's not too bad once you walk down there. They're not too bad. They're more out here, to be honest. Along near the boundary fence and out near the big bonfire heap, which that one never got burnt, but uh, that will as time goes on. Uh, most likely in the autumn. Anyway, don't know if the sheep will get the idea of eating all these this year, maybe, maybe not. I think there's a little almond tree, this is going well since I put the thing over it. So there's a plum tree that's right down the bloody hill, that's going fantastically. Yeah, anyways, I just put it like this, there's going to be a few changes next year, I'm, I'm not bringing home a friggin' male or a bride or anything like that, that might be 2018, but there'll be a few changes, and uh, things you'll see sitting around here probably early next year, you'll see a lot more shit that you uh, 
might not have expected to see stuff that I've got to do as part of a, uh, a job where I'll actually be uh, well working from home is it, there's a lot of question marks still in the air but it's it's fairly likely it's going to happen that I'm going to be holding down a normal job and doing a bit of other stuff working from home on the weekends and it's not your average work it's actually you'll see it when you'll see it well the old kettle uh, gave up the ghost bloody handle snapped off us <laughs> so that's the end of that one I was trying to get the, the cap off and it's a bit hard at times obviously your cap is the last thing to heat up after your main unit heats up and as a result the metallic thermal expansion or the thermal expansion of the metal rather means that this part ends up bigger than this part and you might not have stuck it on there too tight but trust me it's pretty hard to get off and of course you're holding it by the handle as you're shaking that and game over it has started to leak out of the screw that holds the handle on anyway uh, every time I got to boiling, boiling point it'll start dripping out through that screw uh, so anyway my parents bought me this one. Oh jeez, I don't know if it wasn't for me last birthday when I turned 34 or something, I can't remember. Anyway, it's in use now. Uh, this is the one with the bottoms. Not really any good for the wood stove because there's too many dips and curves and whatever. Um, but it works fine on the uh, propane slash LPG stove. Um, Long story short, it, when it boils, it actually makes quite a bit more noise as uh, the water's heating up. But when the whistle goes off, this thing would bloody deafen you. I mean, it was deafening. And this one's only quite a mild whistle, the new one. So, anyways, um, that's that. But uh, I got that old kettle for free as part of me business back in... Uh, Shit, it was either the end of 2000 and... No, it was early 2011, I think I got that. Um, and that had been, obviously, used previously. The old lady had about three or four kettles and a natural gas stove, so she probably barely even used that one um, comparative to some of the other ones, most of which ended up in... Well, all of which end up in scrap metal aside from that one. I'm kicking myself that I didn't keep the other cast ironish sort of one that she had but uh, obviously it would take quite a while to even heat up that thing but um, yeah and I was given the current one that I'm using now um, first one I ever had in this house was a cheapo five dollar one brand new polish made and the bloody seam in the bottom was shit and it leaked water from the first day I bought it which sort of explained why I got the damn thing cheap as dirt but uh, that landed in scrap metal rather quickly. <laughs> Anyways. <coughs>